Hello, in this video I will demonstrate the capabilities of Batch Plus. This tool allows to run the specified macro in the Batch mode for all of the SOLIDWORKS files in the specified folders. As a first task, we're going to batch upgrade all of our files from SOLIDWORKS 2019 to SOLIDWORKS 2021. So we have a few files here and what we want to do is to set the orientation to isometric, zoom to fit, also hide all types and rebuild the model. For that we're going to create new macro. Let's call it force rebuild. I'm going to download that macro from codestack.net. Let's navigate to SOLIDWORKS, goodies and performance section. Here we can download macro to force rebuild SOLIDWORKS model macro. Let's copy code and paste it into our macro. Let's run it on the inactive model to make sure that it works as we expect. When we click run, our model is set to isometric, zoom to fit and also rebuild. Let's close this model without saving and let's now run this macro for all the files in my folders to batch rebuild my documents. I'm going to activate batch plus, create new job and in the files and folders section I'm going to drop folders I want to process. You can drop multiple folders or just root folder if you want to. In the macro section, we're going to drop our macro. Let's specify the filter to only process SOLIDWORKS files. When doing upgrade of your files, especially if those files are managed by SOLIDWORKS PDM Vault, it is important to process the files in the right order. So we firstly want to process parts, then sub-assemblies, then higher level sub-assemblies, all the way up to the top level assemblies and drawings. This will ensure that our models do not have an update flag when checked into PDM or when opened in SOLIDWORKS. Order by dependencies option does just that, so let's activate it. Let me also change few more settings. So firstly I'm going to enable background mode, this will ensure the better performance when processing my files. I want to select to process these files in SOLIDWORKS 2021. Forbid files upgrade is a protection option ensuring your files cannot be accidentally upgraded while the session of batch plus. But in our case we want to upgrade our files so I'm going to uncheck these options, otherwise the save will not be performed. As we need to save the result of force rebuild macro, we have two options. First one is add to the command for saving directly into the macro or by enabling automatically save documents option in the batch plus. I'm just going to go ahead with the second option. We can change other options, so I'm going to change the size of my batch to 50 files, which means that SOLIDWORKS will be automatically restarted after every 50 files got processed, which could improve the performance of our operation. We can start the process by clicking Run Job on the Job tab, or we can also click a Play button on the top right corner of Batch Plus. We can save this job as a separate file, so we can open it later and rerun. So let's start our job. Now Batch Plus is going to start SOLIDWORKS to initiate the batch job. And it's also going to build a dependency tree, so we can select the order of operations. So in this case, the default option is children to parents. So all of the lower level files are going to be processed first, followed by higher level files, all the way to the top level documents. We can select different options if you want to. Once completed, we can click OK to start the process. Batch Plus will open every file in SOLIDWORKS and run the macro. You can also track the progress under the status bar. You can see which file is currently running, what macro is running and what's the result of the operation. Batch Plus is built with the resilience in mind, so if your SOLIDWORKS crash, hang, file cannot be opened or any other error, Batch Plus will continue the process, ensuring that your large job is processed successfully. When process completes, you can inspect the result and activate summary tab to see the general overview of your job. So this one took almost 19 minutes and all 160 files were processed successfully. Let's open a couple of them to validate the result. So as you can see this file has been upgraded and isometric view and zoom to fit have been applied. Let's activate another file and now let's open one of the assemblies and see the result here. So in a similar way file has been upgraded and the correct view has been set. In some cases you will want to find all the dependency of an input assembly rather than specifying the folder. So let's drop assembly here and I want to process all of the files as well as drawings of this assembly. For that let's activate extract references option. If macro supports arguments we can pass them to this box. In our case 
files have been already upgraded, so I only want to zoom to fit and hide all types and avoid rebuilding. So I'm going to specify those two arguments. Now I can run my job. Arguments in VBA macros is a unique feature of Batch Plus. Please read the documentation of Batch Plus for more information. The reference extractor dialog shows all the references including the drawings of the input assembly. There are, however, more drawings of this assembly, but those are not get loaded by reference extractor. And the reason are those drawings are saved to external folder to the root folder of our main assembly. Fortunately, it is possible to specify additional folders to load drawings. So let's specify the drawings folder. And as you can see, more drawings have been loaded to the list. You can check and check the files you want to process. And you can do this for the columns itself or individual files. One of the features of Batch Plus is an ability to run the job from command line. So let's activate Batch Plus from the command line and specify the help flag to see its available options. We can run the job by specifying the input job file or by individual parameters, such as input folder, macro, filter, etc. To run the job from a file, we need to use job verb. So let's explore options of this verb. So you can see you can use run switch to specify the file to run. Let's explore the option of a run switch. So in this case, we have way more options, and those are equal to the options you have from the user interface. Let's create and run one of the job. I'm going to use run verb, and I'm going to use dash i option to specify the input folder. I'm going to use dash m option to specify input macro, dash f option to specify input filter. So in this case, I'm going to use SolidWorks files. Dash E option allows to continue the work even if there is an error for file. Dash S option allows to specify startup options. So in this case, we're going to start SolidWorks as silent. And dash O, we're going to open files as silent as well. Dash A option allows to add additional actions such as auto save documents. And finally, I'm going to specify the version of SolidWorks to use. In my case, it's going to be 2021. So let's click enter. And you can see the process is started. But now all of my logs get output directly to the console application. SolidWorks is starting and our batch operation is performing. You can see the progress in the console and also the logs of all the files processed. When the process completes, we're going to have the final message with the summary of our batch operation. Command line support by Batch Plus enables additional integration option. So you can run this from a server within your application or for example, you can schedule this using Windows Task Scheduler. So let me copy the input here and let's activate Windows Task Scheduler. So this is not a SolidWorks Task Scheduler, this is a Windows Task Scheduler built in all Windows installations. Here we can create new task on the right panel and we can give it some name. So let's call it SW Update. We can specify triggers. So in our case, we're going to run this automatically based on a time. So we can schedule it daily, weekly, monthly, or just one time. In this case, I'm just going to put one time. And let's run it in the midnight. As a next step, we need to specify the action which is going to run our batch plus with an input parameters. So let's activate action stop and create new action. You could select batch plus executable as a program or script, but in this case, you will not be able to redirect the output into the file. Although it is not essential to redirect an output, it would be quite handy to have the log file so we can validate the result of our background process. For that, we need to use command line cmd program and pass the pass to executable and also the parameters as an argument of this task. Let's now compose our argument. As the first step, I'm just going to paste the content of my buffer into this text box. As the next step, I need to redirect my output into the file. So in this case, I'm just going to output it to D, demo, cut plus, log txt. And I need to use more symbol to do that. This is a standard functionality of all the programs run from command line. So rather than output the logs to console, we can output this to the text file. I will also need to use forward slash C switch in my arguments. Finally, let's specify CMD as our program. We can click OK and close task scheduler. Now, when there is going to be a midnight, our task will be automatically started. So now it is a midnight and you can see that our process has been started. 
and Solidworks is starting in the background and is going to process all of the files in our input folder. Block file is created so we can open the text file to see the progress of our operation. So you can see for now it's just opening the first file. Now all files processed, we can open our log file and you can see all of the log is here and our summary is also here. So 26 files have been processed successfully. Thank you for watching this video.